Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now that time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. Not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. 15th August, 1947. Midnight. India awakes to a new life of freedom. But two centuries of colonial rule had decayed India from within, leaving the country ridden with poverty and hunger. Our founding fathers set out to wipe every tear from every eye. They needed a pole star, that single focal point to make India modern and progressive. Something that captured the uniqueness of the chaotic but eternally hopeful nation. A bright light to illuminate the dark storm lashing the horizon of the future. The 1920s was an uncertain period for the Indian national movement. And then came the Chauri Chaura incident. Mahatma had suspended the non-cooperation movement. 3rd February 1928. The Simon Commission arrives to review the Act of 1919 and was met with widespread protests as it had no Indian representation. The British, in their arrogance, proclaimed that Indians were incapable of self-rule and deciding for themselves. Lord Birkenhead, the Secretary of State, in response to the Indians' reactions, laid down a challenge at the House of Lords. The Founding Fathers rose to the occasion. An all-party conference was convened in February and May 1928. Led by Nehru, the committee drafted the Nehru Report in September 1929, demanding self-government under dominion status within the empire. But Kaide Azam, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, rejected the report, stating that from then on, Hindu and Muslim paths were different. He further countered the report with his infamous 14 points in March 1929. Meanwhile, the annual session of the INC was held in Lahore in 1929 under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru. They voted for the historic resolution of complete independence and declared the last Sunday of January 1930 as Independence Day. The resolution gave the British Parliament the ultimatum that if they accepted the report by 31st December 1929, Congress would adopt it as it is. If not, they would insist on complete independence. December 31st, 1929, the INC stalwarts gather around the River Ravi. The British have paid no heed to the ultimatum and thus the Swaraj flag is proudly unfurled. The freedom fighters were prepared for the fight. It was an event so monumental, it would change the course of history itself. Elections were held in 1937. INC came into power and formed ministries in almost all provinces. For the first time under British rule, Indians could become directly associated with the government. The dream of Indians holding the power of the government and serving the masses had become a reality. But the cheer didn't last long. World War II was initiated. Congress ministries resigned in 1939, protesting Lindhut Goh's decision to involve India in the war without consulting the Indians. Multiple attempts of involving India in World War II failed. With its end, the decline of the British Empire became inevitable. Mutiny amongst the naval rankings and the Air Force was the final nail in the coffin. The Cabinet Mission Plan arrived in 1946 to try and reach a settlement acceptable to all major stakeholders. The plan became the foundation for the establishment of the Constituent Assembly. For a total of two years, 11 months and 18 days, over 11 sessions and sitting for 166 days, the Assembly debated and discussed the various challenges facing the new nation. The ideas of liberty, equality, fraternity and justice were embedded deep into our Constitution. On 26 January 1950, the constitution was enforced in its entirety. It is the foundation of free India, which we have become so accustomed to. It is our duty as citizens to know it, understand it, nurture it and defend it. It is our duty to remember, so that we can build the India of our dreams.